Josh. What with it being half term for the kids as well, it all fitted in quite nicely. We'll need flipping shoes and managing to do. <laughs> would you like me to give you a hand with that, Mr. Oh, Peters? I wish you would, Mrs. Braithwaite. Making a right dog's breakfast out of it. <laughs> I've never known a man yet who could pack a suitcase properly. <laughs> you say it's your sister's place you're going to stay at, then? Well, sister and brother-in-law's, um, I got a letter from her out of the blue. Last I heard, he was working as a painter and decorator. Now, would you believe it? They've gone and bought themselves this pub near Watford, the Lamb and Bear. Oh, that must have been a turn-up for the book. Well, of course, when they asked us down for the week, I jumped at the chance. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Oh, for the kids' sake, of course. You know, big back garden, seesaw, swings and a sand pit. Oh, that'll be nice. And it'll be different having a big pub to run in and out of all day after being cooped up in here. For the children, of course, it'd make a nice change. Yes. I wonder where the little imps have got to. If we don't catch the half past eleven bus, we'll miss the quarter to one train. Oh, you dang blasted strawberries. What kind of a place is it for Aunt Sally when it's got rising damp and, and a pesky roof when it's on the wedding? <laughs> dang ratted articles. I knew there was someone sticking it to me. Yeah. I have to find myself a new home. That's all there is to it. <laughs> How long did he say he was going to be away? He can't stay in the caravan if that's what you're thinking, Wurzel. Dad'll go potty. Well, not if he wasn't to tell him he wouldn't. He'd still know. There'd be straw and twigs and mess everywhere. And you can't stay in our caravan anyway, Mr Gummidge. It's being locked up. I don't want to stay in a drat at all dot anyway. Pesky old thing. It's not the sort of place that suit the couple. <laughs> Where did you say he was going? Long way away, is it? Watford, if you must know. Watford, eh? Ain't never been to Watford. Never had no cause to. Come on, Sue. That'll go crackers. You know we've got that bus to catch. We can't stand here listening to a silly old scarecrow telling lies. You watch your tongue, you dratted pesky little human. Uh, young missy, uh, excuse me. I, I don't suppose you got that. A spare key to fit that little wood nut of yours. Uh, John's right. You can't stay in our caravan, and that's that. Now, you won't forget to send us a picture postcard, will you? Let us know you've had a safe journey. A safe journey? Well, they're only going to Watford, Betty, not darkest Africa. Well, it won't be all plain sailing, Mr Braithwaite. One bus, two train journeys, and we've got to negotiate our way from Waterloo to Euston. Big deal. I shouldn't think there are any picture postcards of what? Well, any old postcard will do, as long as we hear from you. All aboard. Be careful crossing London. Yeah, watch out for boys and arrows. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. Have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to miss those kiddies. No, I just think the landlord, the coach and horses will miss the dad as well. Jack, still it'll be funny having the caravan standing empty. Yes, you're right, it will. Humans? Ten first, so I did. Going off across the oceans as far as Watford and leaving a tidy home all locked up. What are you up to, Harry? Cleaning out the pig state gutter, Mr. Braithwaite. Well, not just now. There's all that mucking out once doing. Shoot me for a day or three. Ow! Oh! 
You little varmint! You Billy Hooligan! I'll do you proper! You mark my words if I don't! Sorry, Mrs. Bloomfield, but I don't see how my Jack can help you with your garden this week. He's short-handed as it is, and what with Mr. Peters being away as well. Not that he's got what you'd call green fingers. Well, it really is most inconsiderate of your farmhand to sprain his ankle, Mrs. Braithwaite. Oh, I don't think Harry fell into the pigsty on purpose, Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton. And nevertheless, it does seem odd that he should choose the week when my begonias need potting. What am I going to do? I don't know. I suppose you could try potting them yourself. Good day, Mrs. Braithwaite. Thank you for the eggs. Liberty Hall here, Mrs. Bloomsbury Barton. Everything free. Oh! A pin! What, no? A pin! What's the old expression now? See a pin, pick it up, and all the day you'll have good luck. Well, don't just stand there, Enid. Pick it up. You stop. What for, then? If you pick it up, you'll get the luck. I shall pick it up. Oh, I've been molested. Molested, ma'am? Molested, assaulted, shot. Shot where, ma'am? In the other, on the, don't be impertinent, Enid. Humphrey, to the police station. Cover me with carp hats and call me smelly. If that don't beat everything for aggravation. I'm going off for a week and left poor old Wurzel without as much as a cup of tea and a slice of cake. Well, anyway, this place wouldn't suit nobody no how. I reckon I'm going to find myself somewhere else tonight. Yeah! Yeah, I don't touch a little humans. Ain't got no consideration for no one. What you got? Hello, young man. You don't have to know a geezer named a brave boy. He's got to charge your arm around these parts, do you? you charge your arm? Chance your arm, Gov. Farm. You haven't come about this already, have you? Someone do you down in the village? What is it, Gov? I mean, it's is a bit dodgy, isn't it? And I'm a bit lambert about me bins. Well, it's casual employment, son, but it's hard work. Dicky Duck. Meat and drink to me, Gov. Clue me in. What is it? Scaring off the old fingers and toes? The fingers and toes? Crows, Gov. Crows. Oh, it's harder than that, son. It's uh, mucking out work, mostly. In the horse's stable and the cow shed. Round the old clock, Gabe, one of Ginger and Fred. And some gov. Lead me to it. Yeah. Ha! Ha! That's it. Same way as I come in, isn't it? I know you're short-handed, Jack, but I don't know why you had to tell him he could sleep in that caravan. I mean, it's not for you to say, is it? Oh, Mr. Peters isn't here, is he? I've got to put the lad up somewhere. Besides, if Mr. Peters was here, I should think he'd be more than grateful. Well, I can't see how you arrive at that conclusion. Well, it stands to reason. It's always better have someone living in a place, isn't it? Geese out vandals and pig strotters. Pig strotters? Pig strotters, squatters. <laughs> I'm not sure I wouldn't rather have squatters. I can't say I like the look of him at all. Well, he's willing, Betty. And you don't ask for more than that these days. Someone's got to do the mucking out with Harry laid up. And I ain't got the time. Do you fancy doing it? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Jack. Well, I don't know anybody else who wants the job. So what's it going to be? Are you going to let him have that caravan for a week? Or are you going to get busy in the Clark Gable and the Ginger and Fred? It's beyond belief, and it can't have been empty more than a couple of hours. My Jack did mention the possibility of vandals, but who'd have thought they'd strike so quick? He's dotted your car, though, Mrs. B, your Robbie has. Proper touch of your own and scandals, this lot is. And what's that filthy scarecrow doing in here? Every time there's any trouble on this farm, that ugly monstrosity is always in the vicinity. This settles it. It goes on the compost heap this very minute. Keep your eyes on Mrs. B. No sense in getting aerated. Yeah, but what are we going to do? Look at the mess. Never mind about the mustard and Chris, Mrs. B. You just slip across to the chancher arm, knock up a pot of Christopher Lee, bring it back here to the Ollie and stand with a nice slice of Veronica Lake. And a couple of line of barts if you've got them. Can I just recap on that? You want me to nip back to the farm? Yep. And make a pot of tea? Yep. And bring you back here with a slice of 
cake. Yep. And a couple of jam tarts. And some Mrs. B. You're catching on a treat. <laughs> Thank you. S were T were O were P with it. S were you were L were K were I were M were G was all was all. Stop sulky. Dang me. Who taught you to speak words of these? A crowman nunky. Who do you think you're nunkling when you're at home? Anyway, and I've seen you somewhere before. Of course you have, you old twit. Well, I'll be bums result. If it ain't me long lost little nephew, Pickles Bramble. Hey! <laughs> well, well, well. Pickles Bramble. Old Wurzel's nearest living scarecrow relative. The very old living straw and twigs. <laughs> so you come to see your old Uncle Wurzel, eh? After all these years. <laughs> oh, well, don't it goes to show, don't it? Our straw is thicker than milk. <laughs> My little nephew. Come over here, lad. Sit in your old uncle's knee for a bit of a dandle. <laughs> Turn round and face your old uncle worse then. <laughs> That's better. That's it, isn't it? Never had no children of my own, you see. Not having never been wet, like. Uh, me and Aunt Sally, if we if we had tied the knot, we we was gonna go out one rare old morning and and, and pull ourselves a little turnip of our very own and, and and bring it up like through through good times and bad <laughs> bad times such as when it had its little childhood ailments like turnip blight and root crop scab. Uh, and in the good times, well, like giving it its first sheep dip bath and teaching it to chuck its first birthday cake at its old mum and dad. <laughs> yes, only, only that never did chance to happen, did it? Still, never mind. It's time yet in there. I ain't entirely alone in a cruel world, not as long as I've got my little nephew. <laughs> So, what are you got to say to your old Uncle Wurzel, then? Cut hold of this, you silly old bug-infested bumpkin! What's that? You heard! And never cross Sharpies to the Clark Gable and the Ginger and Fred and start mucking them out, double quick! But you can't talk to your old Uncle Wurzel who loves you most in all the world like that, Pickles! Well, I bet! I'm here on my holidays, isn't I? So somebody else has got to do the grafting. It yeah, well, ain't going to be me, Pickles, and that's for certain. Oh, yes, it is! In the argue fine, I'll let Mrs. Braithwaite sling you on the chimney sweep. Chimney sweep? Oh, oh, no, oh, no, Pickles, oh, no, no, you, no, you, you wouldn't do anything like that. You're not your old uncle, Wurzel. Wouldn't I just get mucking out? Go on! Yes, Pickles. Hang about! Yes, Pickles. If I was you, Nunky, I wouldn't go getting no ideas about nicking off down the village. I clubbed that many villagers this morning and put a word around that Barney old tramp did it. Looked like a ratty old scarecrow he did. So I now reckon they're in the right to an eight. Sling a scarecrow on a bonfire, soon as look at it. Oh, why for you do a thing like that, Pickles? To keep you here grafting and get looking out! Yes, Pickles. Hang about again! Yes, Pickles. And after you've done that, you can clean out this muck hole. How can I enjoy me holidays if I'm living in a rubbish tip? Don't stand there, Gorbin Nunky. Chop, chop. You know where you'll be. Lovers leap. Lovers leap? Compost leap. Young man, get stuck in. You're certainly earning your keep. Earning my keep. Love asleep. Compost deep. Right. Who is it? Uh, it's only me, Pickles. Old Uncle Wurzel. Uh, I've done what you've told me. I've mucked out the Clark Gable. I'm the ginger and Fred. Handsome. So what's your mutton curry? 
What's that? Why? Oh, uh, it, it's nothing, Pickles. It's just, it, it's just I'm ready for Betty, that's all. Seeing as I'm a bit tired, like. Oh, my. I wouldn't say no to a cup of tea and a slice of that there chocolate cake, though. You get your own grub. Eats my chocolate cake. Oh, blimey. You are in straight for the castle and keep. Oh, no, no, no. I, no, no, I, I ain't hungry anyway. No, no, I, I just lie me down over there. I won't cause you any problem. Not in here, you won't. Ask your coker. You get your head down in the barn. You're a mucker out. Oh, and your ding and dong. Ding and dong, Pickles. Pong, stink. Get out. Come on, scram. Get out of here, will you? Uh, Pickles. Hurry up. Come on. Morning, Aunt Sally. <laughs> you get out of it, Esbeth. What do you think I am? Your breakfast? <laughs> oh, my, but I'm hungry. Who is it? It's breakfast. Now, don't let it get cold. It's bacon and eggs and sausages and fried bread, and I've done you a bit of black pudding. Cool, handsome! Oh, and by the way, Mr. Braithwaite says, do you think you could fit the pigsty in this morning? No trouble, Mrs. B. Right. Ah! Oh, ah. Hello, Pickles. <laughs> you heard what Mrs. Braithwaite said. It's pigsty cleaning for you this morning. Either that or it's the foam in deep. Foam in deep? Compost deep. Ah, oh, dang me. Oh, I wish I had an head for this particular nephew situation. Posse McCoo, I has. It's in here somewhere. I ain't had much call to use it recently. Not since Soggy Bogger gave his niece little Becky Blossom Bogget at their party on account of her getting over a nasty attack of turnip weevil. There. Where is it? Ah! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Come out, I know you're in there. Hey! <laughs> there it is. Ah! My jolly uncle's there. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll give young pickles a party. <laughs> He'll never resist a jolly uncle's head, will he, eh? Hey! <laughs> There we is, little nephew. <laughs> I reckon a couple more of some puffs and that about do it, eh? Hey! <laughs> Who's a clever little chap then? Trying to make his poor old nutty wurzel jump, eh? What's next, Nunky? <laughs> well, it's a barrel of fun, this one, Pickles. It's what we call apple dunking. It's more like an Halloween game. You got the apples all bobbing around in the water, and the idea is you put your head over the edge of the barrel and try and pick one up with your teeth. How do you mean, Nunky? Well, I'll, I'll show you. Here, have a look, you see. Is that this, yeah? You look. Oh, Mr. Mr. Have another go, yeah. Oh, Mr. <laughs> oh, a sharp as a little potato peeler, aren't you? <laughs> Bless your little cotton socks. What's next, Nunky? Right. Now, this game is what we call Blind Man's Buff Pickles. I'm the blind man, see? And you turns me round and round and round three times, and I have to catch you. <laughs> All right? Come on, then. And some Nunky. Off we go, then. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Oh, where are you? Over here. Ah, you're over there, are you? Hey. <laughs> I'll have you. Hey. Hey. Well, come on, young scallywag. Give us a clue. Over here, Nunky. Ah, over there. Ah, I'll catch you. Don't you fret. Hey. <laughs> I'll have you. Hello. Oh, that's the door. I know what that is. <laughs> How am I doing? Oh, okay. Now. Oh, man. 
I didn't know Buckingham Palace were in Watford. Oh, it's John and Sue that are in Watford, Mr. Croman. They sent me that to say they're enjoying their stay, but will be glad to be back home, bless them. P.S. Very good draft bitter. Oh, I think the P.S. is from Mr. Peters. Oh, aye, it would be. And after you've finished this, you can shoot across and clean out the Mickey Mouse. The Mickey Mouse? Chicken house. All right. The pickles? What is it, Nancy? Oh, nothing. I was, I was just wondering, that's all. Whether you're a dabbing on with that catty pot of yours, as you said she is. There, Ben! I'm the best there is, isn't I? Oh, I know you're very good at hitting the bullseye when it's bending down. But I was wondering how good you was at hitting the moving target. <laughs> like that one over there, for example. What's this? <laughs> oh, I think me Daleks are got it this time, young Master Clever Stick. That's one out you should never have knocked off. <laughs> Pickles. Pickles! Pickles! Where the Willikins has he got to? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hello, your eminence. <laughs> Didn't see you. Standing there, your prominence. <laughs> it weren't me, sir. No, it weren't old Wurzel. No, answer. No, never. No, you wouldn't. Wouldn't find old Wurzel firing no catapult and... And the iron lordships just like yourself, sir. Oh, no. No, never in a million years, sir. Not even in a fortnight. Give that to me. <laughs> Please, your lordship, I, I beg your highness's pardon, only I, I can't beg your highness's pardon when it weren't me what done it in the first place. Pickles, bowbells, brambles, show yourself immediately. Over here. Here. In here. Easy one being nicked in possession of your offensive weapon. You can't prove nothing. Prove. Prove. Have you been so long in that London slag heap you've forgotten who breathed life into you? I am the crow man. I don't need proof. I know. Th then I hope you know put me up to it. I do, indeed. And Wurzel, on this occasion, I'm prepared to admit. There might be extenuating circumstances. Oh, uh, thank you very much, your magician. Uh, I hope that means I wanted to carry on with all that there mucking out. You do indeed, Wurzel. I didn't stick you into this earth to become a mucker-outer. You're a scarecrow. That I am, sir. I'm proud of it. Scarecrow, a ten-acre field. That's what I am. Indeed you are, Wurzel. And you, young man, are nothing more than an urban pigeon scarer. A nasty little gutter snipe, a creature of the city. And you're going back there now. Your holidays are over. Whistle. I rely on you to escort Master Bramble out of the district at full speed. Little Neville. <laughs> what is it, Nunky? You are about to experience Meow's hoot on your nest of ants. Your owl's hoot on my nest of ants, Nunky? <laughs> the toe of me boot on the seat of your pants. Now get out of there. Come on, get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. 